Manx Radio's Countryside is brought to you by NFU Mutual. Hello and welcome to Countryside here on Manx Radio. I'm Simon Clark. And I'm Kerry Kermode. We take a look back at a very successful Royal Manx agricultural show. We chat to the secretary, the judge, the president and all the champions and reserves on the day. Well, Kerry, you've braved the uh, elements and the moron uh, to uh, join me at the Royal Manx Agricultural Society show at Nokalo in Peel. And again, a bit of a mixed bag of weather, but didn't dampen spirits, did it? It really didn't. And them too, the same as the Southern District, had a new layout and I think it worked really, really well. Yes, there was uh, some interesting things as well as the livestock and all the farm machinery that was on display, flying motorcycles and the uh, the big shire horses that came over. Uh, wonderful display and a lot of people and the young, young ones standing by them going, wow. It is absolutely a spectacle to see some travelling horses like that coming over to the Isle of Man. It's always great when we have visitors, always great to see new things, experience new tastes, get involved, take part. And I think one of the most popular ones for the children was the hammer and nails putting together bits of pallet lumps of timber having a great time in the Max telecom stand there mm, it's all out the... of plasters and things <laughs> to get them the kids but we were in the main ring when the president for this year alan skillicorn picked the judge robert kennedy who took his time deliberating over his decision and finally picked the winners so the third reserve and fourth place went to Alan and Sandra Jones from Smale with their Simmental Bull. Wonderful to see, I suppose, a breed that you don't see many of now, the Simmental. They're a dual-purpose breed. You can either use them for meat or you can use them for milk. Yeah. So and tell us a, a bit about this, the, the bull you've got on display today. He's a, just over two years old, homebred. Um, he's weighing just under the ton and very docile yeah and he's lovely and it'll be kept for our own breeding yeah and it, it must be you know so satisfying one that you've, you've bred and raised yourself to see it coming away with one of the main prizes though well it is as i said to fiona before our whole lineup of cattle today in the simmentals and the blues um we've had 10 animals here and every one of them's home bred and it makes you very proud to stand there and look at them all and people tell you how good they look. Yeah, and when we stand behind this, uh, uh, the, the solid sort of muscle and, and rear that's on this one, it's, it's tremendous and similar to the, the, the British Blue really as well. Yes, uh, not the double muscling of the British Blue, um, but a more versatile bull maybe, you know, in that, again, you can use it on any breed and you've got a good milky cow out of it yeah. but a good solid animal if you're going to use it for meat as well they kill out well yeah. but he won't be getting killed <laughs> <laughs> well you and alan have been great supporters of the the, the shows uh, over the years here in the isle of five years is it yeah 25 years yeah and does does it still uh, give you a buzz when you've got a you know a good animal to show yes yeah well you come with all your hopes and expectations don't you and and you sort of hope that they will be some of the best on the day but it's all in the judge's eye isn't it <laughs> yeah but uh, many congratulations come away uh, with one of the main prizes which are a lovely uh, home uh, reared bull here the yeah. Simmental. well done thank you thank you very much Sandra Jones telling us about their Simmental bull that came in third reserve and in second reserve place was the Creer family from Bologlony, and I caught up with Ailish Creer. Back in the final lineup again in the Royal Manx show. No stranger is showing your family. Well, congratulations, overall sheep champion. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, it's always amazing to be here. So, yeah, definitely. And who have we got here? Um, so this is Coris Escobar. Um, he was actually my pick from the Welsh Premier. So he's a two shear ram, so we class him as an age ram, just means he's two years old. Um, Texel, he's bred about just under 50 registered Texel lambs for us this year. We got him as a shearling, which is a one year old, so 
Yeah, they we'll like just say. Yeah. They don't, yeah. But this is the thing. Sometimes the animals, they can be it's breeders, boring. but they can't do the both, can they? Yeah. You know, this is a show animal and obviously producing the goods at home. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we got him off our good friends, the Watkins, um, after the success of Dundee last year, and he's just following suit, so can't complain at all. Like Couldn't be happier. Oh, well done. Well done, Ailish. There we are, a very delighted Ailish Creer standing in the second reserve position. A very popular runner-up or first reserve on the day was the wonderful Ayrshire Cow from the Callow family in Balalai in Andreas and it was shown on the day by Alfie Melling. She's doing good, she's a nice cow, uh, but first time getting in the Grand Parade and I've won a trophy which I'm pretty happy with. Uh, so yeah. Well I think first reserve in the Royal Manx Show for 2023 <laughs> yeah. is not a bad effort. Yeah it's good, lots of great stock out here and uh, so she went through a lot which was good. Yeah. And tell us a, a little bit about the, the Ayrshire here. Uh, well, you know, uh, she's blazed, Sally. Uh, she's just carved, she's nicely done. Uh, that's about it, yeah. She's all right, she's a good enough cow to get first reserve in the Royal yeah. Manchester. What age? Yeah, she's five. Five? Yeah, yeah. third carver. Yeah. But they're a lovely breed, the Ayrshires, yeah. aren't they? I know you've, if we'd had a step counter on her today oh, with the yeah. amount of circles <laughs> that it's done, but they're, they're usually quite quite a placid breed, yeah, aren't they? They're calm, they're nice, they're nice to milk, you know. They're just good cows, I think. Yeah, and the, the callows have always stayed with the Ayrshires, really, mostly. Um, yeah. but what's the secret? Be? What, why, why is that? I don't know, mm. they're just a good animal to look at in the middle of a field. That's all. It's just it, I don't know. Yeah, And of course in, in the world now of um, a lot of the dairy trade with the Holsteins and things like that, it's uh, it's still great to see the, the brown and white ash is involved in it, isn't it? Yeah, and it, the, the traditional can still keep up with the milk, the amount of milk that the Holstein are bringing in, which is good to see. It's good to see that they've still developed on so they can still survive. Yeah, making great yoghurt. Yeah, making great <laughs> yoghurt at the dairy shed. <laughs> Well done to you and, you, you and all the people involved uh, yeah, in getting the second place today. Well done. Thank you. Alfie Melling showing the runner-up on the day or first reserve Ayrshire cow from the Callow family from Belay Farm in Andreas. And they're there with all their entourage, all delighted as punch. And the supreme champion for the day for 2023 was the Quail family from Glenlock. And I caught up with John Quail. Well... The biggest congratulations to the Quail family from Glenlock, the supreme champion for 2023. How do you feel, John? Oh, top of the world, yeah. Really chuffed, yeah. Never thought we'd ever get this far, but yeah, she's a smashing cow. It's a cow we yeah. bought, came for, bred by uh, Richard Kukul, so uh, he's got to get a lot of the, um, credit for this. But, she uh, looks the part today. A lot of work has gone in behind the scenes. Yeah, there is. A, yeah, the family put a lot of work in too. We have a good uh, team effort so that's the way you look at it absolutely yeah. and james here ably showing her today she's misbehaving now it's been a long day yeah. uh, great yeah. work yeah it was great i'm sure we'll have to have a cracker bottle tonight <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, robert kennedy the judge uh, he took his time he gave all the exhibitors uh, a chance to get show their wares yeah yeah i'm sure he'll, he knows the stuff he's uh, been involved with sheep and uh, beef and dairy over the years so uh, yeah, he's top man. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'll let you go and enjoy it and sink all in. Thanks very much. Well done. Cheers. There we are, a very pleased John Quayle with his supreme champion, the in-calf limousine cow. Yeah, and it was uh, an emotional time, wasn't it, uh, when we were looking over? Unbelievable. Yeah. The tears of joy, I would say. The first time that they've won that supreme championship and been such a supporter of the shows, the Quayle family in one section or another competing all these years and to finally get their hands on that Rose Bowl. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. It was certainly a great choice and great display of the stock that were there. But it doesn't go ahead without uh, the people behind it. And Kiri, you caught up with the judge on the day. Robert Kennedy, a man who took great privilege in walking up and down to pick his champions. And I caught up with Robert just after he'd finished. The main man of today, the judge for the Supreme Championship. Well, I don't know about the main man, but uh, as I said, the first thing I did say was I thanked Alan, which is our president, for even considering me for this prestigious job. Of, I, I must admit, in my lifetime, I never, ever, ever expected to be standing out here doing this. So... I must thank him for that. Now, what I would say is the standard of stock in the Isle of Man has improved all the time. I'm, in the, I'm the sheep judge supervisor, 
And honestly, the quality of, of stock down there now is improving all the time, partic particularly, I suppose you could say, even, even in some of the other classes, but in the Charleys and the Textiles and the, and the Chivias and what have you, all of them are all coming on really well. And there's a lot of time and money and money being spent by the farmers to imp yeah. to improve mm -hmm. all this sort of uh, stock wise. This is it. So it's and it's a great great pleasure, you know. And everywhere, right through the whole show today, stock was uh, it was exceptional. It, it, really, it really was. was and yes. it made it look like a very very difficult job you it, had in this last well, four lineup, was, including the light horse there at yes, the end too. Yes, yes. The only yeah, the, 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 it was a, the horse was a gelding, so. You all sort of should be a breeder, I so see. that that's yes. that's the basics of uh, how I I would look at it anyway. I so that, that was the decision. if it had been a mare something, I think I could well have had that up. Well, so, I never. Yeah. And your winner today, oh, the Quail family at Glenlock with the limbers and cow. Exceptional cow. She was finished right behind the shoulders. Perfect, perfect for you know beef wise. Mm -hmm. She was that. The bull, the bull was a little bit weak behind the shoulder, not filled in yet enough. Still growing. Yeah. He's only, he's only young yet. And that's the Simmental. That's the Simmental bull. Uh, the the Ayrshire cow. I did. I like the I like the Ayrshire cow. And you kept nice cows place. one time. Yes. I, well, I worked at Glenlock for for five years uh, milking cows and yeah, showing with with Henry and George. Well. Henry and George uh, Quayle, that's uh, Peter's, uh, well, John's, John's father. My goodness, yes, yeah, yes. put so them together talk, now. Talk about, you know, the big, <laughs> round, big round circle. Goodness me. But, yeah, that Ayrshire cow, the teach was spot on. Uh, yeah, excellent, excellent cow. Danny's, he's got, you know, he's, he's gotten well bred, but... Uh, Every year he comes out with something special, doesn't he? He does. He's, 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 he's some, a hard he's, man to beat. <laughs> he's some boy, isn't he? <laughs> hey? What I tell you? And well, well and look, yeah. look at that. What a sight that is there, uh, Robert. We're witnessing the Quail oh, family the quail, for the, the first quail. time. Yes. yes. A supreme champion. Uh, yes, I first time. Yes, and I, I must say she is spot on. Yeah. I wouldn't. I, I didn't hesitate. Yeah, uh, you, know, you gave them all the time of day. I gave them all fair, fair looking, yeah, and I really yeah. enjoyed it. And, and now you can relax. I can relax, I can think, well, yes, I have done it. Excellent. Well right. done, Robert. Right. OK, well Kerry, well thanks done. very much. There we are, a very relieved Robert Kennedy, the judge for the Supreme Champion of 2023. Yes, he made sure he had his right choice in his mind. Anyway, that was for certain. <laughs> Well, Glenn Lease, you've uh, seen many agricultural uh, shows in your time and delivered many beasts backwards and forwards. And you've a nice presentation of an award for you and your, your family. Yeah, definitely, Simon. I've been doing this pretty well all my life. Um, grandfather started the business in 1933, so it's 90 years this year. Um, I've been driving myself for 52 of them, so I've done quite a share of them. And, Funnily enough, this year I haven't got a wagon here because I had nothing to bring this year to this show. But having said that, it's, uh, it was chaotic in the early years, we doing four or five runs each, getting home at nine, ten o'clock at night. But they were all happy days when you look back. Yeah. When you look back at it, um, were the animals different? They were supposed to be a lot smaller sort of breeds <laughs> in the early days, was it? I think there was a lot more people had a lot more stock from our point of view. There'd be well, this show, I'll tell you. In 1973, when my dad retired, I kept his boots. Dad billed 37 people to come to this show. Now, say 12 or 15 of them were horses, that still meant 25 odd farmers. And a lot of them were full loads. Various people send a, a wagon to themselves to bring to the show. So a lot more people had a lot more stock coming. Whereas now, I suppose, a lot of, there's not much people on the farms. And also, a lot of people just bring bits and pieces in their stock boxes themselves. So. It's made a difference to our point of view, but yeah, I've been there and got the award for doing there. <laughs> I feel like I've done 90 years myself. <laughs> <laughs> but it is wonderful, and it's been sort of part of, of, of the farming community for many, many years. Because, you know, the great thing is the, the transformation, because you'll be transporting a few cattle backwards and forwards for people to different fields, and then you'll take the box off and be moving bales. Yeah. And I suppose more round bales now, but being an art, you'd have to learn how to pack the square ones in your day too. Yeah, I did all the apprenticeship <laughs> on that and I don't regret uh, <laughs> doing it, but on the other hand, I wouldn't want to go back to it now, carting them square bales, but I go, they were hard work. 
can't how, how many would you fit on? We used to get about 250 on a wagon at the time, but it was 250 on and 250 off. And you had a couple of wagons on there, goes that'd be like a thousand bales you shift in an afternoon, stacked on the lorry and then stacked in someone's barn somewhere. So, oh, yeah. so was there always the farmer who had heavier bales than everyone else that you didn't want to go to? Uh, not bad. No, most of them weren't bad. Most of them weren't bad. Just sometimes you see you coming and oh, I've got to go and do something else, you know. <laughs> but most fellas were pretty good and you know, give you a help and load them and what have you and get them off. But yeah. that was good. We used to do, an example, we used to do 4,000 bales most years just up to the home arrest without anybody else's. So that was like 4,000 loaded and 4,000 off the wagon again. So it was a lot of, a lot of hard work. Yeah. I was fit in them days. <laughs> <laughs> and was there, was there a was, was there a sort of knack to it? To because you know you had to obviously go to the fields where they'd have them usually penned in a corner, and you had to get the, the truck and the wagon in the right place and get them in. Was there sort of an art to it with with different types of animals? Well, they're all yeah. I suppose there would be some fellows are very good and got excellent excellent. Uh, loading facilities and other fellows just haven't so you know yeah there's, there's certainly an art to load and I mean over the years things have changed with different breeds you know they used to be a lot quieter cattle I suppose but these days are a bit wild because they're not handled the same and they used to be tied by the neck in stalls a lot of the cattle the fat cattle even as well yeah so yeah times have changed yeah and then any uh, stories you'd like to share with us where, where th- things haven't quite gone to plan or um I, I, I could talk to you all day on that one Simon <laughs> Well, we got all day. <laughs> <laughs> there's, uh, yeah, there's various things spring to mind. I mean, when I used one of the places I used to get sent when I first started, I only had a little lorry when I'd been a teenager, and I used to go for pigs at a place, and um, the pigs were always in the old dwelling house, and you back you back to the front door, drop the ramp on the step. And what have you got today? And he said, well, there's three in the back bedroom, two in the front bedroom, one in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> you try getting pigs to come downstairs, I'll tell you, it was adventure. <laughs> Great part of the agricultural business and uh, well done to uh, you and all your families uh, before and after as well. Yeah. 90 years. 90 years. Thank you very much, Simon. Thank you. Well, I caught up next with the president for the 2023 Royal Manx Agricultural Society show, Alan Skillicorn. Good display of stock at the end there in the Royal uh, Ring. Yes, excellent. I wouldn't like to judge it really because it was... But in, in the end, he got it, got it right because exactly the same as I had it. Really? Yeah, exactly the same. Yeah. And the same person was alongside me, Body Kelly, we had the same exactly. So we won our bet between us. <laughs> <laughs> but it was nice and it was, it was great that the, the different breeds that are there, isn't it? It always makes it special. I mean, there's people watching from the sidelines who, who are farmers and farmer background. And there's just members of the audience who may not know. You know, they'll just go, oh, they, that one's got nice eyes or ears and not really know what the judges are looking for, Al. Uh, no, I, it's, it's nice to see when the Grand Parade is on that everybody comes to the, to, comes to the ring. And they're interested, whether it's because there's livestock there, and then it's what you've just said, that they, they don't, probably some of them don't understand the breed points and everything, but they understand the livestock on the Isle of Man, and that's what we need to look at, because we need the livestock on the Isle of Man to keep looking at as it is. Yeah. Well, you, of course, I suppose, renowned for, for your dairy herds in the past, Alan, and the milk, and um, is that what you particularly pay interest to or do you sort of is it nice to get around and see all the other types of animals that's on display no i i've since i've been here friday and saturday i've been around most i've been around all the stock thanking the people for coming here and been all around all the trade centers thanking them for being here and if there's any problems see us, can we change it or help for next year that's what we've done try to do anyway so. Yeah, um, but being, you're well known around it, and uh, maybe not so much with the with the trade stalls, but putting your face around, I suppose it's just an important thing of being present and a nice thing to hear. Well, I've been involved with this for 52 years. Graham Crow's father got me involved 52 years ago. He said, "Can you come to a meeting tonight?" And I've got ever since. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> You've been on the board ever since. Been, on, been on the on the council ever yeah. since. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, your, your choice of judge uh, today, Robert Kennedy, uh, known Robert a long time? Ever since Young Farmers, yes, I think. I only asked him a couple of nights ago um, because the person I had to, to do it went into hospital, very, not very well at all, so he, he had to sort of jump in to help me, so, and he did a good job. 
and then just I got a thing Robert. Well, yeah. he certainly didn't rush his decision. Now, <laughs> he <wasn't> he? <laughs> didn't. No. Well, that is Robert anyway. <laughs> you but want to see him putting the sheep pens together? It's got to be right. Your uh, milk and herd with with the Holsteins, Alan. Yes, Holsteins. Yeah. The, the person who got me show into showing in a big way is it was the beef judge here today from uh, North Wales. He, I bought a calf off him in the 80s and that went on to win a lot of championships for me. And, and it, it's nice to get um, the, the judges and people from away to judge, isn't it? Because I suppose they, they don't know the people over here so they can't really pick favourites. And it's nice that you know they, they see some different animals. It's independent, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. People can't, can't criticise, oh well, he's a relation to him, he's friends of that. Uh, and, yeah. Difficult to get away from that in the island. <laughs> it is. <laughs> when you kick one, you kick everybody. <laughs> I had a good team around me for this last fortnight. And I've got to thank everybody for that because we had really inclement weather. Last Sunday, we had an awful lot of young farmers here, which really was impressive to see because we've been trying to get younger people because we're all getting older and older. We want younger people to come in. And it was, it was great to see them. Well, I think it's been another successful show and uh, well done to you, your involvement with it and the team. Thank you very much. Alan Skillicorn, the president of the Royal Manx for 2023, sounding delighted that uh, he was in that position and working with such great people behind the show. A real great committee there at the Royal Manx show and ever the worker, Carol Kenyuk, the secretary, we caught her just before we went out the gate. It's all done for it's another year. Done. It's all done for another year. Who oh, would have thought a wow. week ago that we'd be standing here and had a su- two such successful days? It really has. The, the sun came out and that's all that mattered. There was forecast for rain. There was rain on the run up to it. I bet you were having the jitters. Absolutely. If you'd have seen this field a week ago, you would never have believed that we could have pulled this off. It was so wet last week, we actually took the tents down along the hedge and lifted the, po- lifted the poles over the hedge into the field. That's oh how wet goodness. it was. And once the field is cut, that's it damaged and it's not repairable and it just gets worse, doesn't and it? And that was exactly what we were trying to do, to stop that happening. But the gates were shut for 10 days, nobody was allowed on the field. It was this hallowed turf, but the last two days we've welcomed everybody into this field. And what a final spectacle that was, the Grand Parade. Absolutely fantastic. Robert put us through, uh, put you through your paces with your <laughs> wittering and talking, but no, no. But when that hand goes on that animal, the joy that must go through that exhibit is mind. <clears throat> and well, I don't know, but it must be fantastic. And this year, the first time they've ever won the Supreme Championship, and they do compete quite often, whether it's the Prime Stock Show or the Summer Shows, they're always there or thereabouts. And very, very much a family affair, and it's lovely to see their own children children now, their grandchildren coming through and it's just a spectacular and this is this is what the Royal Manx is all about. It really, really is. And I know Emily, your daughter, has been here backing you up all week, even on the run up to it. She's an absolute mainstay. It is. We're just, we are just one big team and in some ways this is where the bad weather has actually worked for us because we were slow getting going because of the rain and then everybody has just pulled together to make this work. It's so important that this works for us and we've done it. We really, really have. And just now we're standing at the exit gate. Yeah. Where, where <laughs> you're not running yet. <laughs> but the trophies here behind us, the last few getting collected, the joy on people's faces as they come to get their silverware, the amount of work and effort that they've put in to receive and achieve the, the trophies. Absolutely. Without the exhibitors, there simply wouldn't be a show. Mm. And we're so grateful to anybody and everybody who has helped us, taken part, supported us, sponsored us. We're very, very grateful, thank you. Yeah, and a big gin now? Very. <laughs> Carol Kenyuk, the secretary of the Royal Manx Show, relieved it's over, but delighted it was such a great success. Indeed. Tough job, does a diligent work, hard work there with Emily, her daughter, as well involved in it, as well as the full team, and still does it with such a, an efficiency, but a smile on her face, which is wonderful, isn't it? It really is. Hope you've enjoyed our look back at the 2023 Royal Manx Agricultural Society show. On next week's programme, we'll be stepping back a little bit, a couple of weeks, to hear a little bit more from the people we talked to at the Southern District show. So until then, from me, Simon Clark. And me, Kerry Kermode. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.